When you live in a place as beautiful as Monterey County, good health feels like part of the landscape. Montage Health is proud to be an essential part of that landscape, here to help make sure all of us are as healthy as we can be. At Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula, we set records for care in 2017 with more than 12,000 inpatient admissions, 330,000 outpatient visits, and nearly 56,000 trips to the emergency department. And we did it well, earning an A for safety from the LeapFrog Group, an independent organization focused on improving healthcare. Westland House, our skilled nursing facility, also had its busiest year and got top marks, five out of five stars for quality, from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Montage Health is also out in the community. Our new mobile clinic began taking care directly to Monterey County's homeless with weekly visits to Seaside and the Gathering for Women, which is a refuge for homeless women of Monterey County. Thousands of people made a commitment to their health and worked out at our Montage Wellness Centers in Salinas and Marina. In Seaside, we built a clinic for Monterey County's Health Department to make sure more residents can get the care that they need the new Seaside Family Health Center is 70% larger than the previous center and has about 50,000 patient visits each year. We continued our countywide campaign to reduce opioid abuse through the Prescribed Safe program. In 2016, Monterey County dropped to the third lowest rate of opioid overdose death per capita in California. and we're focused on the future. We made significant progress on our newest and biggest location of Montage Medical Group in Ryan Ranch. It will be open this spring. The office will be home to more than 40 doctors as well as other clinicians and is the seventh Montage Medical Group site in Monterey County. We are busy recruiting doctors and clinicians to work there, and to help ease their transition, we purchased an apartment complex in Monterey to provide temporary housing. Once these new doctors and specialists come to Monterey County, we know they'll love it here, taking care of you. Montage Health employees love what they do, they score at the top of the charts when it comes to being engaged in their work. From everyone at the Montage Health family of companies, Community Hospital, Montage Medical Group, Aspire Health Plan, Community Health Innovations, Montage Health Foundation, and Montage Wellness Center. Thank you for making us a part of the landscape. Welcome everyone. My name is Patrick Welton. I'm honored to serve as the chairperson of Montage's Board of Trustees and honored to introduce the program today. Before we begin the program in earnest, I'd like to pause a moment and thank every one of you. Your dedication, your support, your volunteerism, all help Montage serve its mission better. And I want you to know that we would not be where we are today without you. Thanks to you, 2017 was just the latest in a series of remarkable years. It was the busiest in terms of people served in our history, and our impact on the community continued to expand and deepen. And for 2018, 
as you will be the first to proudly learn here today, montage will remarkably expand our impact even further. So it's now my honor to introduce my longtime colleague, my friend, and truly the best healthcare leader that Montage could have ever hoped for, our president and CEO, Dr. Stephen Packer. Thanks, Pat. You betcha. Thank you, Pat. If you're a, a returning attendee to one of our uh, annual meetings, let me say, welcome back. And if this is your first time joining us at a Montage Health Foundation annual meeting, thank you for joining us. You know, through the work that we do at CHOMP, uh, I am fortunate to hear from patients and family members on a regular basis, and they often share their own personal health journeys with me. And in recent years, I've kicked off our annual meeting with a personal story, and this year is no different. This year, I'd like to share with you a mom's story about the challenges and the journey that she and her family has faced for the past 10 years. She wrote these words in her journal and then recently recorded uh, her story in her own words so that we can hear, uh, hear her story. Let's listen. Two-handed, she hoists the thick, giant glass vase above her head, as high as she can reach. She stops only for a second to stare straight into my eyes. And then, with all the force she can muster, she sends the vase crashing to the hardwood. Chunks and shards and powder cover the upstairs floor. I'm shattered. These are the same two hands that at the age of five earnestly molded clay into a pot that reads, Happy birthday, Mama. The two hands that taught me that crayons are for coloring outside the lines. And the same two hands that had most recently learned to dribble and shoot a basketball well enough to make the high school junior varsity team. I try to calm her the way I have a million times over the 14 years since we adopted her and her sister as babies. She kicks me as hard as she can. I retreat into my bedroom, fearful that the wrong burst from her at just the wrong time could send one of us tumbling down the stairs. She ups the ante. Bam! Bam! She's kicking the door, the only thing that stands between us. First one foot, then the other. Bam! 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 Her foot breaks through. My daughter has literally kicked her way into a place she often fears the most, a place close to me. These are the feet that stuck out a whole season of cross country when they really didn't want to, the feet that climbed a ladder every Christmas to help me proudly hang her handmade paper snowflakes. The explosion isn't over. The torrent of rage carries my daughter down the stairs. We're more than an hour into this. She makes her way to the kitchen. She's heading for happy birthday, Mama. I get there first. I can't let her destroy that pot because it's one of the few concrete examples of joy and connection between us. She moves to the counter. There she finds a bunch of bananas and she hurls each one against the wall. She opens the refrigerator, pulls out a full quart of orange juice, unscrews the lid, and dumps the entire thing on the floor. I explain to her that we need to go get help. We need to get to the ER, the only place we have, unless we're willing to call 911. Her sister, secluded in her own bedroom upstairs, calls out, Mama, I'm scared. Her sister doesn't get scared, not in these moments. She knows them too well. She has been to the ER. Only her visits have been for self-harm, the result of a deep, relentless, debilitating depression. Her most recent visit, only a few months before, is still fresh. She sat before me, attached to wires. Her life praying as we weighed our options. Go home without her. 
send her by ambulance to a psychiatric unit for teens more than three hours and 100 miles away. Wait for this to pass and then go home praying that it really indeed had passed. We left a short time later headed for home knowing we would inevitably be back. Our family has been to the emergency department four times in the last two years. Each time we find a way to bring our girls back home despite the risk. The alternative, a lockdown facility so many hours away is simply too much to bear. So we try again and again and again. We search for anything that might lift us out of the confusion, the desperation, the grief. Maybe more therapy. Maybe another special private school or a summer wilderness camp. Keep focusing on the dogs and the horse lessons. Yeah, that's it. Surely the animals are helping. Read more books. Get tutors. Try medicine. Go to more therapy. So our family resigns itself to tiptoeing around our daughters, lest they explode or implode. We rely on medication. We squeeze in enough therapy to make it another week, another hour, another five minutes. We add more horse lessons. We celebrate making the basketball team. We know there must be something somewhere that can help our daughters and our family. We will keep searching and will never give up. We will always, always hold on to hope. But for now, the holidays are here again. So we'll do that thing we do every year. We pull out the handmade paper snowflakes, climb the ladder, and proudly hang them from the ceiling. What you just heard is a frightening and a sobering story. It's something you'd never want your family, your friends, or indeed anyone to have to experience and endure. But sadly, the story we just heard and ones just like it are not rare. Today, here in Monterey County, here on the Monterey Peninsula, right here in Monterey, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of families that are struggling with child and adolescent mental health issues. The fact is that the stigma, what some would describe as shame, associated with mental illness, still in 2018, masks an open and honest discussion of the frequency of child and adolescent mental illness. Did you know that in a recent survey conducted by the California Department of Education, nearly one in six high school students surveyed in the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District considered suicide? One in six. One in three students described depression-related feelings sometime in the preceding year. We're not unique here in Monterey. Nationally, nearly one in five youth between the, ages of six, uh, between the ages of nine and 17 will have a psychiatric disorder at one time or another during their adolescence. Here in Monterey County, when these youth are in crises, when they're in acute crises, there is nowhere nearby to go. Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz counties, along with 41 other California counties, have no child and adolescent acute psychiatric inpatient beds. So when kids are in acute crisis, they wait. They wait often in our emergency department, and they often wait for several days while we look for a specialized inpatient unit where these kids can receive the treatment that they need. But today, here at Montage Health, we're going to start changing that. Today we are announcing the launch of a comprehensive, ambitious, far-reaching, integrated, regional, child and adolescent behavioral health program. Our program, when fully realized, will include a freestanding facility dedicated exclusively to child and adolescent behavioral health. The warm and welcoming facility to be located at Ryan Ranch will include an inpatient unit so that those requiring hospitalization will no longer have to wait for several days and travel hundreds of miles for the treatment they need. The facility, equally important, 
importantly, will host outpatient services and family programs and community outreach and school outreach as well. To convert such a transformational idea into an actual living and breathing program requires a truly transformational gift from a visionary donor. So today I'm extremely proud and excited to announce that longtime Montage Health supporter and Carmel resident, Bertie Bialik Elliott, has made an extraordinary gift to the Montage Health Foundation of $105. $0.8 million. Soak it in, Bertie. It's beautiful. This gift will be used exclusively to transform behavioral health care for the children and adolescents in our region. This is by far the largest gift our organization has ever received. It's the largest gift ever received by any non-for-profit organization in Monterey County, and it is most definitely one of the largest philanthropic gifts across the entire nation for any charitable cause in 2017. Bertie and her family have been longtime friends and supporters of Community Hospital and now Montage Health. She helped to lead campaigns for other projects that we have uh, launched, and she served on our Board of Trustees from 1997 through 2003. She and her three daughters handpicked this initiative. Why? Because Bertie believes that without a significant commitment, an undertaking of this type would never happen. When we talked to Bertie about what we should call our child and adolescent behavioral health program, she said, Ohana. Ohana is the Hawaiian word for, for family. Family in the most extended sense of the word. Not just blood relatives, but also adoptive family and chosen families. Ohana. Our goal is that Ohana will not only benefit the, the youth of our community, but also that elements of this innovative program will serve as a model to be replicated across the country. We are in the very earliest stages of planning Ohana's development with many things yet to be determined. But this much we know. With a gift of this size, we know that we will do something extraordinary. We'll do something unique, and we will do something truly groundbreaking. In the coming months and years, we will be building a team, a program, and a facility. We've begun uh, to set a strong foundation for our program, having welcomed four new child and adolescent psychiatrists to our medical staff within the last two years. Today, we launch a national search for a, a physician, an innovative physician expert to help lead our program. In the coming months and years, we will be enhancing our program with additional psychiatrists and psychologists, counselors, and social workers we will, quite simply, transform behavioral health for our community. I've had the pleasure of knowing Bertie for more than 20 years. Now I'd like you to get to know Bertie a little better. I wanted to make a significant gift to the community here, which I love. And I wanted to do something that would benefit the community at large. And community hospital benefits almost everyone. Back in the 90s, I'd helped with the Comprehensive Cancer Center campaign. And then I was asked on the board of trustees in 1997, so I got to know the people there, including Steve Packer who at that time was a member of the board. And while I was on the board for six years, then he became CEO. So I really knew and respected the people there and felt like if, if a gift was made to them, they would make it happen. I 
wanted to discuss it with Dr. Packer, I told him, I said, come back to me with ideas because I want to do something that you and your team think is important. And he comes back with four different ideas. And when I looked at the four ideas, um, the, the, the one for what we now are calling the Ohana Project is it kind of jumped out at me because it was something that we don't have. We don't have beds for children and adolescents at the hospital that require um, mental health evaluation or treatment or help. So it sounded like the kind of project to me that wouldn't happen if there wasn't a big gift made. And I individually had each one of my three daughters look and see what they liked the best without telling them what I liked the best and without their sisters around. I mean, they're just individual. And each of the three daughters had the same response I did. Ohana is, is a word from Hawaii. It means family, but it's also friends that are like family. And of course, the medical part requires doctors. I mean, MDs and trained, very highly trained people. And it's an important and serious field of medicine. You know, it's both. It's both things. It's, it's an Ohana effort. Yeah, so I'm really excited. It makes me happy every morning when I wake up and think about it. Truly, remar truly remarkable. I want to once again thank Bertie on behalf of myself, the entire team at Montage Health, and all of the community, the community who will benefit from your generosity and your vision for generations to come. Thank you so much, Bertie. Please stand up.